Good evening. Good evening. We'd like to uh, call the meeting to order. Um, opening in the regular part of our meeting, we were in closed session, and uh, now we're back to begin the rest of our meeting. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Mr. McCullough, could you please lead us in the pledge? Thank you, Mr. McCulloch. Um, next item is approval of the agenda, and I have uh, two uh, corrections to the agenda under item X, new business item B, dual language immersion. Uh, the agenda has it correct as a non-action item, but the BRM um, on page uh, 160 has it as an action item, and it is a discussion item it is not an action item so that correction needs to be made um, and under item uh, six consent calendar item B number one the report of certificated employment um, it has uh, Renee Leonard who is um, resigning it has her listed as Renee Leonard at Lorena Banis Elementary when it should be Los Banis Elementary. So that has been corrected and that has been corrected on the website as well. So those two items. So, uh, Dr. Marshall, any other corrections or additions? Uh, no further changes. Okay. So with that, um, I need a motion to uh, approve the agenda as corrected. I so move. Second. We got a motion by uh, Member Munoz, seconded by Member Smith to approve the agenda as corrected. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It is carried. We're gonna start with our introductions and recognitions tonight. Um, is Catherine Toomey here? All right, Catherine um, is one of our two um, student rep uh, board representatives. And um, she, was, uh, she was unable to be here, so she did calling her back up there, which is the other student representative. Uh, but we did have a little gift for uh, Catherine and a note thanking her for her service this past year on the board. And uh, it's a nice little gift card for her to spend, spend some, uh, hopefully buy something educational, which probably, which probably won't happen. But hey, it's her money to spend how she wants. So we want to thank Catherine for her great job that she did. We, we presented um, the same uh, Gift your card and thank you to. Uh, I went blank for a second. Jacinta, thank you. Jeez, I went. I'm sitting up here. And I'm going. Oh no, um, Jacinta. So, Jacinta, thank you. We we sent her thank you last week and but last month and she's back. So, it was a little or month early, but so we want to thank our student board members for doing a great job. Um, on to the state finalists, Mr. McCullough, state FFA finalists and other accolades that our FFA students have gained this year. Everybody here? All right, here we go. Ladies, gentlemen, board members, and district administration. My name is Stuart McCullough, and I am one of the six vocational agricultural instructors at Los Banos High School. I'm here tonight with a fellow colleague, Adam Jacobo, from the Los Banos Junior High School FFA chapter, and we have Maria Cousins from the Pacheco High School FFA chapter was here, but unfortunately, her little boy is getting a couple stitches right now. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> However, uh, we want to say that we are here with the distinct pleasure of presenting to you 13 students 
from all three of the chapters to be recognized for their outstanding achievements this past spring. Just a little information for you all before we get to the students so that you have a better scope of their achievements. The California Association FFA just reached a membership of just over 100,000 members spread out over six regions of the state. Our three chapters are within the Merced Mariposa section that is in the central region. The central region is the largest region in the state spanning from Dos Palos to just north of Sacramento, east to the Sierra, and west to the Delta. There are 80 FFA programs, over 240 agricultural instructors, and over 24,000 FFA members. Our region, as well as the Merced Mariposa FFA section, are FFA powerhouses within the state that bring home numerous state and national titles each year on a multitude of different platforms. Making it out of our section and the region in the areas of public speaking or proficiency awards is a huge feat. When looking at career development event judging teams and the agri-science fair, the central region is a leader of the state as well. With that said, we're going to get on to recognizing these awesome FFA members. First, we're going to talk about the FFA Creed. The FFA Creed is a speech that is only available to 7th, 8th, and 9th graders to compete in. The students recite a five-paragraph speech composed by E.M. Tiffany and then have to answer three questions within a time frame of five minutes that relate to agriculture and the FFA Creed. Questions like, with California producing 90% of the world's total almond crop and 70% of that crop being exported to other countries, how do tariffs and embargoes affect the marketability of this project? product? Excuse me. It is easy to see that the state level is deep with talent and these 7th, 8th, and ninth graders can handle some in-depth topics and field some difficult questions. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Zoe Wooten from the Los Banos FFA chapter. Zoe Wooten is the first state finalist creed speaker from the Los Banos FFA chapter in 15 years. She made it all the way through the local. She made it all the way through our local section, regional, and into the semifinal round at the state. Congratulations. Now, we're going to move on to a brand new prepared speaking contest uh, for the California Association FFA. It is again the FFA Creed, but this contest is held completely in Spanish. All the same rules and guidelines, but the entire contest is in, in proper Spanish. The California Association FFA moved to offer this contest in order to give an opportunity for its students whose first language is Spanish. This is a great opportunity that allows more of our members to, uh, to engage in a formal public speaking contest. There is one aspect of the contest that is different with the Spanish Creed as it is the only Spanish speaking contest in the state of California. In order to give more students the opportunity to compete in a formal speaking contest, the contest is not limited to only 7th and 8th and 9th graders. It is broken into three divisions. The Discovery Division for grades 7 and 8, the Blue Division for grades 9 and 10, and the Gold Division for grades 11 and 12. The community of Los Banos had a great showing at the regional finals, with 8 of the 12 eligible spots for the state contest awarded to the central region being secured by our three local chapters. And just to let you know, these students did not hold back as all eight of them made it into the final round and into the top six in the state. So now we'll go through and introduce the students and their placings in the respective divisions. For the Discovery Division, fourth place from the Los Spanish Junior High School FFA chapter, it's Iana Martinez. 
Third place from the Los Banos Junior High School FFA chapter, Montserrat Garcia. Second place from the Los Banos Junior High School FFA chapter, Andrea Aguilar. And first place from the Los Banos Junior High School FFA chapter, Elena Trujillo. For the Blue Division, fourth place from the Los Banos FFA chapter, Jaylene Verriga. Third place from the Pacheco High School FFA chapter, Maria Cibrian Vasquez. And for the Gold Division, sixth place from the Los Spanish FFA chapter, Elizabeth Buenrostro. <laughs> Second place from Pacheco High School FFA chapter, Nanel Santiago Martinez. Again, congratulations to these Creed and Spanish Creed speakers for continuing our tradition of public speaking at a high level and for being pioneers in new arenas that provide opportunities for students where they have not been before. Okay, now moving on to the area of AgriScience Fair. The AgriScience Fair is in the, the AgriScience Fair for the FFA is in the same format as many other science fairs, but focused on agriculturally based experiments. The students have six different categories in which to choose from and each have their own ranking statewide. This year, McKinsey Miguel from the Los Banos Junior High School FFA chapter entered an ex experiment in the category of food products and processing systems that address the shelf life of strawberries. Her attention to detail and the quality of her experiment resulted in McKinsey being awarded the high individual overall for the state of California in the discovery division in her category. Okay, as you can see, there's a few other students here that we haven't uh, spoke about yet. So Matthew Pacheco. Brooklyn Silva, Carly Rocha, and again, Zoe Wooten are the four members of the Los Banos High School Chapters Dairy Cattle Evaluation Team. The Dairy Cattle Evaluation Contest for California consists of six classes of live cattle evaluation and ranking, three sets of oral reasons to defend class placings on selected classes and a written dairy knowledge exam. And folks, the exam is really no joke, okay? Because it has questions like, how many gallons of blood travel through a mature cow's mammary system in order to produce one gallon of milk, okay? I personally have had the privilege to coach the dairy cattle evaluation team for the Los Banos FFA chapter for 26 seasons. In that time, we've had 18 finishes from second to fourth at state finals. However, this year our team rose to a new level and secured the first state dairy cattle evaluation championship title for the Los Banos High School FFA chapter since the year 1963. And on a historical note, the members of that team consisted of Ron Simmons, Frank Miranda, Anthony Silva, John Galicchio, and was coached by none other than Dr. Joe Cox himself. Yeah. We use the word team in many ways. However, a true team is what you have here this evening. Excuse me. This title would not be in the hands of the Los Angeles community without the combined efforts of all four of its members. I had a talk with each of them after our CSU Fresno contest a couple weeks prior. I gave each member an area I wanted them to focus on 
and said that if they could gain ground in those respective areas, that we would be competitive at the state. Well, folks, these students took those words and put in the work and secured the win with a very tight three-point margin over Turlock FFA. Additionally, those efforts that these students put in landed two of our members in the top five individuals in the state, with Matthew Pacheco placing second, and Carly Rocha placing third. Just to give you an idea, one pair switch on a class placing, one stutter or bobble in a set of reasons, or two missed questions on the exam would have resulted in them being second. Additionally, but wait, there's more. Uh, additionally, this title comes with the honor of representing California Association FFA at the National FFA Dairy Cattle Evaluation Contest this coming October at the National FFA Convention in Indianapolis, Indiana. Okay, so again, ladies, gentlemen, board members, and district administration, myself, Adam, and Maria, want to thank you for the allowing us to work with the amazing children that are enrolled in each of our programs, and the distinct honor of being able to stand before you this evening and showcase the outstanding achievements that these members that come from all three FFA chapters that are here in the community of Las Vegas. Thank you. I know I speak for all the members of the board. Um, we want to congratulate all of you um, and thank you for all your hard work and also your teachers for everything that they have done to uh, build you up to be the great students and the great uh, representatives of Los Banas that we have. So thank you to the staff, thank you to the students, and we are proud of you. Congratulations, let's give them a round of applause. All right, continue on with our accolades for tonight. Um, I'm going to call up the academic pentathlon team from uh, Westside <laughs> Elementary. They jingle when they walk. <laughs> All right. Good evening. Thank you for letting us be here tonight. I am a Tammy Schultz, fifth grade teacher at Westside, and I'm also the sixth grade academic pentathlon coach. 
Um, this past year, the students again participated in the academic pentathlon, which consists of sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And this year's theme was the American Revolution. And so that was their history. Their science was chemistry. Their math was algebra two and trigonometry. Fine arts, music, and they did a phenomenal job. They have been working every day after school since October, Saturdays, couple of Sundays, days during spring break. They have given a lot. On April 29th, we went to the Merced County Awards for the Academic Pentathlon. And these students here took 87 individual medals. They took first place in the sixth grade super quiz. They took first place in the sixth grade overall team. And they do another category, which is an overall category, where they have the five highest scoring students of the entire event. All sixth, seventh, and eighth grade are all combined. And four out of the five are standing here before you today. And with that, Max Menifee is the top scoring student, a sixth grader out of 320 students. <laughs> this year has been something of a challenge in a very good way. We got some information in September that based on previous scores that we were going to be invited to the national academic pentathlon competition. It's being held in California this year in Garden Grove. The unique thing about this is that only seventh and eighth graders, they only have seventh and eighth grade division. So when we were invited, we were told that we would have to compete in the seventh grade division. We took this challenge. We thought, okay, we're gonna work really hard. We're gonna go do this. And we are gonna love every minute of that experience. Well, at the same time they were getting these awards for county, they were having to tabulate our scores so that they could rank us with the seventh and eighth graders in the, in the nation, so each state. We found out just a few days later that we are actually the California champions in the seventh grade division. And so for the first time ever, we are going to be sending a team to the national competition. And I'd like to present those, the team members here that will be representing Los Spanish Unified School District, Merced County, and the state of California next week. They are Max Menifee, <laughs> Sienna ha uh, Halloran, <laughs> Rachel Betchart, Reese Betchart, <laughs> Angelisa Bagley, <laughs> Ward Sabe, <laughs> Delia Perez, <laughs> Audrey Lugo, <laughs> and Jorge Oliveras. <laughs> I would like to thank our principal here, Dr. Lada, for her support. And I'd also like to thank your support, because without this, um, some support from you, we would not be going to nationals. And we are very excited, and we're going to do the best we can to represent Los Spanish Unified School District for you. So thank you for letting us talk to you tonight. Real quick, I just wanted to add, um, Ms. Schultz is very, very modest. She puts in, they always ask, What's her, what's the secret sauce? Everybody asks her why, you know, you win year after year. It's her hard work. She is there. She is the first one besides our head custodian. She is the first one on campus every single morning, every single day. And she is the last one of all of our teaching staff to leave every single day. So I just want to recognize her hard work also because she does an amazing job and really puts in the time that is needed to bring these kids and be the state champs.
I know I speak in, for all the board members up here. Uh, we are so proud of you guys. Um, keep up the great work. Um, I know you do well in Garden Grove. And uh, thank you to um, Ms. Schultz for all of her work, for the parents, for getting them to school on all those days off that they showed up and Saturdays and Sundays and after schools coming to pick them up. So parents, thank you for everything you've done to build such a great group of students and a great uh, representation for Los Banas going on to the state. So and uh, nationals, congratulations to all of you. Another round of applause for them. the room clear out here for a second. Yeah, they check my All right. Well, we're going to continue on with our celebration of our employees and staff uh, with our recognition of our retirees. I know that there are many people here that um, are retiring and they're happy. And there's a lot of us who are not happy because they're retiring because they, they've, done, they've done such a great job for the district and um, put in a lot of years. And uh, we're sad to see them go, but um, speaking from personal knowledge retirement's great you're gonna love it i tell you so so dr marshall thank you well we have several individuals this evening that'll be retiring after years of dedicated service so the way we're going to do this i'll call the name say the school number of years come up i'll shake your hand we have your awards and we'll just line up kind of like the students did uh, prior so let's start first we have from law spanish junior high school uh susan Oresha. Susan, come up, please. Araka, Araka, sorry. Yes. All right, from Los Banas, Los Banas High School, uh, Deborah Areta. She has 28, 28 years' experience. We have uh, Rita Chavez from the district office, 23 years experience. I'm sorry, Susan uh, has 22 years of, of service. Sure. All right, next, from Pacheco High School, Brenda Clark. 22 years experience. Next from Child Nutrition, Noelia Costa, 20 years experience. From Mercy Springs, we have Kristen Dyer, 12 years experience. Transportation. Steve Franco, 30 years experience. Lorena, from Lorena Falasco Elementary, Addie Gonzalez, 19 years experience. Creekside Junior High School, 
Elvira Gusweiler, three years experience of service. Okay. Melissa Jackson, Law Spanish Junior High School, 26 years of service. From Law Spanish Junior High School, Evan Jones, 22 years of service. From Grasslands Elementary, Janice Jones, 12 years of service. Side Junior High School, Denise Jordan, 15 years of service. From Los Spanish Junior High School, Kimberly Knight, 32 years of service. From District Office, Mary Leon, 21 years of service. Creekside Junior High, Matthew Loeffler, 34 years of service. From District Office, Connie Lopes, 32 years of service. <laughs> Inside joke. <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, from Los Banders uh, High School. Adelia Martinez, 29 years of service. From transportation, Patricia Martinez, eight years of service. From Mercy Springs Elementary, Carrie Moore, 15 years of service. From transportation, Yolanda Moreno, 11 years of service. From Los Spanish Junior High School, Hosina, Ho Josefina, I'm sorry, uh, Navarez, Navarez, 21 years of service. Pronounce the right. From Special Services, Dean Purser, 22 years of service. Okay, sorry. From uh, Miano Elementary, Teresa Robinson, four years of service. From Child Nutrition, Tammy Rodriguez, 29 years of service. From Creekside Junior High, Tina Marie Sanchez, 26 years of service. And last but certainly not least, from Child Nutrition, Rebecca Terranova, eight years of service, Child Nutrition. Let's please give all of our retirees a round of applause for one big hand for their service. And what we'll do is... Yeah, let's make it. Yeah, 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 y
I had your name pronounced right the first time, and I wrote it down. I had to write the first time. None of them look old enough to retire. I don't know what they're doing. Uh, but we want to we thank them for all their work they've done these past years. No one's listening. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're going to uh, we're going to continue on with our meeting. I I know there's lots of celebrating going on, and we have a bunch of really happy people that were just up here. Um, but we're going to continue on and uh, let them celebrate their retirement. And like I said, none of them look old enough to retire, so I don't know what they're doing here. But um, they were great. I, I know I know all those people up here, and um, they were wonderful to work with. And uh, great friends and they're going to be a, a great loss to the district they were a great asset that we had so congratulations and we will miss you all for sure um, um any member of the public that wishes to place an item on our agenda for future meetings uh can do so by contacting the superintendent it superintending it superintendent and uh letting him know what you, what you'd like to place on our agenda if it's within our purview it could be placed on our agenda um and uh, you'll need to do that at least two weeks prior to any regularly scheduled board meeting. Um, there's items on our agenda tonight that if anybody would like to make comments on, they have the right to do that by coming up to the podium when that item comes before us. So please, if uh, when uh, we get to that agenda item, you can step up to the podium and uh, you'll be recognized and you will have three minutes to speak on that agenda item. If there are multiple speakers on that agenda item, then there will be a limit of 20 minutes for that agenda item with each uh, speaker getting three minutes or however less if they take less time um if there is anybody here tonight that wishes to address the board on any item that is not on tonight's agenda they may do so by approaching the podium and uh, you'll have three minutes to uh, speak with a total of 20 minutes for each non-agenda item so if there's anybody here tonight that wishes to address the board on any item that is not on tonight's agenda, please come forward. Uh, by the way, um, when I said that the, you'll have three minutes, there's a timer over here and it says it's running, but I'll stop it and reset it. Um, but that, that'll give you an idea of where you are. It'll leak after two and a half minutes and uh, you'll kind of know where you are. So welcome. Huck these. Good evening. My name is Denise Clark. Uh, I am a member of the executive board for the Los Banas Teachers Association. And I'm also a member of the executive board for the Merced, Par Merced Mariposa Service Center. Um, tonight, we're actually having our awards dinner that um, honors not only um, our own teachers, but also honors those people in the community who have really been friends of education, teachers, and students. Um, I'm going to get a little emotional. Uh, we decided that um, we'd much rather be here presenting this award tonight in this forum 
because it was a much more appropriate. Um, tonight, um, the gold award um, is presented to someone who shows leadership that their acts actually support and have a positive impact on public education. And I was gonna go into the accolades of this person and check off all of the wonderful achievements, um, but I really decided that it just was not her style. Um, she was a Rotarian and the Rotarians have a four-way test. And the four-way test is, is it true? Is it fair to all? Does it build goodwill and friendship? And does it benefit all who are concerned? And I have to say that nobody embodies the rotary four-way test like Mark Bitten did. So when we decided who we wanted to give our gold award to, um, I don't think anybody even thought for a second that it would go to anyone else. Um, unfortunately, because she's not here, um, some people would say, oh, she got it because she has passed. And I have to say that that is the furthest thing from the truth. Marg was truly one of a kind. And I had the honor to know her for 10-ish mm, years now. Um, first as Kara's mom, and then as someone running for the board, um, and then as a board member and a friend. Um, when I was running the Every 15 Minutes program at Pacheco, she came to all of the parts of the program. She wanted to know what was going on. She wanted to be there because she knew that that's really what was best for everyone. She didn't sit behind a desk and say, tell me what happened. She wanted to be there for herself. Um, she lived it. She really listened. Um, she wanted to always know that you were heard. And even if it wasn't what her path would be, if she knew it was the right path for you and the best for our students and our community, it was what she did. Um, I have to say that her authenticity, um, when she expressed gratitude, was never, ever in question. Um, there was a quote that I came across recently that said, always leaves things better than you found them, especially people. And I have to say that Marg Bitten did that for our kids with the wonky donkey, um, for uh, my husband who now makes her amazing chocolate cake. Um, she touched lives in ways that um, I think that she would be honored to know, but would poo poo it as though it was not a big deal. And I want to say that Marg Bitten was a very big deal. So I would like to ask Kara and Lee to come up so I can present them with Marg's Gold Award tonight. just like to thank Kara and Lee and Lily Bitt for being so patient and for sharing Mark with all of us. Thank you. Thank you. And, and Denise, for those of us up here who got to serve with Mark on the board and got to be good friends with Mark, um, she was everything you said and more. Um, just absolutely wonderful. She loved Lily Bet to, to, the, to the end. Um, and she loved being part of the board. And uh, um, I can just tell you that Marg and I had lots of conversations. Some of them were even about school stuff. Um, <laughs> but um, she, was a, she was a true friend. And I so miss her um, so much. And uh, I know we all do. Lee, I know you do, and Kara. Um, so. Thank you for sharing her with us in the short time that she was with us and we all miss her dearly so thank you for that honor for her she totally deserves it and um it was her love it was so thank you so much all right is there anybody else that wishes to address the board on any item that is not on tonight's agenda Good evening. Good evening. Dear parents and members of school, Los Banos School Board members and school district, my name is Kimberly. I am a resident of Los Banos and have two children in the school. 
One of my children, who was going to Lorena Pulasco Elementary, was getting bullied and harassed by a student and her sister, where the principal did nothing about it, but instead called my daughter a liar. I then took it to the superintendent and did a formal complaint and had a meeting about the incident, but not again. Nothing was done. I asked the principal, the teacher, and the superintendent to keep that child away from my child. But again, nothing was done, except for lies from the teacher, the principal, and the superintendent. I told the school in my daughter's IEP about the bullying and harassment is doing with her anxiety and depression, but yet again, nothing was done. And I was told by the superintendent to get my daughter help with mental health instead of making her feel safe at a school at school like she should feel. Instead, my daughter felt like nobody cares about her and nothing matters anymore because the people who is supposed to keep our children safe and try to fix the problems in school did nothing instead, let my child get bullied more and more every single day and did nothing to stop it or didn't care how my daughter was feeling. Instead, I had to get my daughter to do home and hospital because her anxiety and depression levels went high and she couldn't handle being at school anymore. Because the school and school district did nothing to stop my daughter from getting bullied and harassed by still getting bullied by the school and school district by not telling the homeschool teacher that my daughter is a SDC student where she could get the right help with her schoolwork. The schools talk about teaching our students about bullying, but why teach our students about bullying if the school and the school district, sorry, school district is not going to do anything about it. Stop bullies in the schools or harassment. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to address the board? Good evening. Uh, hello. Um, my name is Luz Reyes. Sorry, I didn't come prepared for this. I have a son. His name is Isai Esqueda. My son is in a special ed classroom. And we do not have options. My son, for two years, he's now currently 10 years old, was waking up at 5 in the morning to go to Winton Elementary School at a county. He was coming home after a two hour bus drive. It was very difficult. I continued to have a lot of struggles. When I asked for options, when I ask for help, it's always promised during an IEP meeting, but it's not followed through. I do not get returned emails. I do not get returned calls. The people that do promise and do say you know, we're going to help you or we're going to do this and that. We're out of options. When I ask for a plan B during my IEP meeting, there's no plan B. So I just want to advocate for my son. I've already been involved. I've been there. I've shared a lot of information of things that happen at home. But I kind of feel that 53 IEPs in two years is a very high amount of IEPs. I've requested for Yolanda that oversees the special ed department to be present and they tell me, oh no, we'll take care of it. She's not available. I've requested the superintendent to be available on my next meeting. It's a no-show, but it's recorded during an IEP. So I'm just here to see if I can get help if I can get names, or who's the next person that I'm able to talk to. Actually, I had an IEP this morning, and all these things have affected not just myself, not just my mental health, but my family. My son has a, a twin sister. I have three kids that go to elementary, and my kids are split up between two different schools. But I have to manage next year again a total of five schools because... Grasslands is literally two blocks away, and I cannot have my kids all in the same school. I never planned for certain changes or certain things, but there's, for me, there's no other way of going about it or getting those help. 
because I'm just limited. There's no options. I don't know what to do. And I'm here tonight basically to see if somebody can actually help a parent. Um, I went to an IEP this morning and I repeatedly have to go through the new changes. My son gets triggered and I mean, he has an unknown disability. I'm glad he's now in our district because a two hour commute for at the time, an eight year old waking up at five in the morning to be ready for the bus to leave at 530 and coming back home with another two hour uh, bus drive. It was very, very difficult. And they ignored um, the doctor's notes, things that I gave and concerns that were there. It was bypassed. So thank you guys for your time and for listening, and I hope I can get some help. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anybody else that wishes to speak on any non-agenda item tonight? Hello. Good evening, board members. I'm Maggie Ardunas, principal of Grasslands Elementary School. And I'm here today to invite you to personally invite you to our ribbon cutting ceremony. As you know, Grasslands Elementary opened in 2020. However, due to the pandemic, we were not able to have a formal grass, uh, ribbon cutting ceremony. And so on Wednesday, May 17th at 4.30 p.m., we will begin the ceremony and I want to cordially invite you to that. On that same night, we will have our open house from beginning at 5.30 where you can also visit the classrooms and see our students' outstanding outstanding work that they have performed and produced throughout the year. And in, in addition to that, our parent club will be hosting our first annual Duck Nation celebration. And so I want to invite you to that. It's a family and community fair. And so please join us on that night. I hope that you can make it. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any Anybody else who wishes to address the board on any non-agenda item? All right, seeing no one come forward, we are going to go ahead and move on with our reports, starting with student representative report. Just sent uh Okay, good evening, everybody. The first report I have is Pacheco High School. And for this month, since it is our last board meeting, we're going to do a little bit of April and May. So to start off Pacheco High School's board report, April 28th through 30th, the Pacheco Thespian Society held their performances of the musical Mamma Mia. The show was a huge success and well attended for all three performances. April 22nd, almost 300 students took the trip to Wolf Lakes in Sanger for prom. There was a delicious dinner served as well as the coronation of prom royalty. Galilea Aguero and Alexis Ortiz Rosano were selected as king and queen by their peers. April 18th and 20th, Pacheco was the site for district choir and band concerts. Both events showcased the amazing musical talents of many of our students in the district. It was an honor for Pacheco to host these events. Pacheco ASB ran their annual Kindness Week, April 17th through 21st. There were activities every day to showcase being a kind panther, including a kindness paper chain hung from the cafeteria. Be kind, spelled out in post, with its positive messages to be taken by students and sidewalk chalk with kindness reminders around campus. May 2nd, senior Abby Pikes was honored at the CIF Sac Joaquin Dale Lackey Scholarship Luncheon Athletic Conference. She was selected as a female recipient of this honor from the WAC League. Fair Week came with great successes for Pacheco FFA. From the Sheep Team Market Reserve Champion Heavyweight Lamb, Champion Commercial Ram, Ty Strominger, Second Place, Chapter Group, and FFA Sheep Goat Clean Barn Award, and the Pink Arena. Amory Cornejo earned Reserve Novice Showman, and Tegan Strominger was first in Intermediate Showmanship and Reserve Advanced Showmanship. Aliyah Garcia also earned Reserve Champion for AOB. For GOATS, Pacheco High School earned first place for a chapter group and had Evan Souza named Reserve FFA Champion. FFA wants to congratulate Nino Santiago and Maria Cibrian for placing in the overall top for the State FFA Spanish Creed. Hayes Lowry and Maya Medrano earned their State FFA degree on April 19th in Turlock. Pacheco High was able to host the WAC Swimming Finals and Track Championships. It was a great opportunity to showcase the great facilities at Pacheco High School and compete for all league honors for athletes. Spring sports have wrapped up with 428 students participating in athletics this year at Pacheco. 44 of those athletes took part in three sports, 28 earned first-team all-league honors, 
29 received second team honors, and 157 were scholar athletes holding a 3.5 GPA for all three quarters of the school year so far. May 19th, seniors will have the chance to walk through the halls of their elementary schools for the annual senior walks. Senior bank will also take place that evening. May 21st will be the annual sports award ceremony at 6 p.m. in the Brett Lee Gym, where athletes will be recognized for their accomplishments as well as the naming of Mr. and Mrs. Panther. May 23rd will be scholarship night, recognizing seniors who received local scholarships. And that concludes Pacheco's report. Moving on to Los Angeles High School for both the months of April and a little bit of May. On April 15th, Las Manos Tigers attended their prom at Coyote Ranch. 300 students attended, and LBHS teacher Mr. Smith was yet again an amazing DJ for the third time this school year. LBHS students are looking forward to having him at a couple of other events at the end of the school year. On April 26th, Las Manos High School Creative Writing Club attended the annual Young Writers Conference at Fresno State. While there, LBHS student Alessandra Ortiz won the Corinne Clegg Hales Award for the poem Repetition. Alessandra was one of the only 32 students that received an award out of the hundreds of students that submitted their writing for the conference. LBHS is very proud. LBHS Art Department held its spring art show on April 28th, featuring two- and three-dimensional composition from visual design, sculpture and ceramics, photography, drawing and painting, and digital media students. The show was open after school for parents and families to attend as well. This was not the last opportunity to see student art this school year. The Los Buenos Arts Council and LBHS Art Department are collaborating on a senior art showcase at the Ted Velasco Art Center from 5 to 8 p.m. on Tuesday, May 23rd. Los Buenos Art Students in Digital Photography and Sculpture and Design also participated in the countywide Merced Multicultural Arts Council Honors High School Art Show, showcasing and representing Los Buenos High School from March 8th until April 17th in their gallery. LBHS student Worm Wrangle's Expectations piece took first place in the three-dimensional artwork. Hector Perez is commended for his elaborate efforts in submitting excellent photography work from various types of photography styles and processes. LBHS had 35 seniors that were awarded the seal of biliteracy. LBHS continuing to update and restore all the murals on campus. The most recent mural was just completed at the corner of Page and 11th Street. There was a record that 41 seniors that qualified as lifetime members for CSF this school year. This means throughout all four years of high school, these 41 students demonstrated outstanding academic achievement all four years. This is the largest number of students to qualify as lifetime members in the last 10 years, and it is believed to be the most qualified lifetime members of all time for CSF at Los Matos High School. LBHS girls swimming took second in league, and Samantha Pantoja won the 100 butterfly and earned first team all league and will be swimming at the sectional meet in May. Standout students James Savage won both of his events and will be advancing to the sections meet in May. He also earned first team all league in both events. The boys golf team secured a trip to the sectionals next week by placing second at the WAC end of the year championship yesterday in Manteca. Cole Ramos was the bronze medalist on the day with an 89. Gannon Lemos and Brockton Borelli both logged a score of 92. Other contributing members yesterday were Larry Borelli, Jet Lindemann, and Anthony Howard. On April 19th and 21st, LBHS Band hosted music showcase for the district. Band, Winter Color Guard, and Winter Percussion from LBHS and other schools in the district participated and performed. On April 30th, LBHS Band also held its annual silent auction. The ROP class awards students excellence awards for the school year. In April, LBHS ROP had two students awarded based on the completion of an employability portfolio, portfolio day interview, classroom behavior, coursework, participation, citizenship, attendance, community service, and professionalism. 11th grader Esmeralda Lopez was awarded for being an excellent student that never has a missing assignment, has great attendance, and is very driven. And 12th grader Antonio Pasilas was awarded for being an excellent student with great attendance. He gets along with all of his classmates and does excellent work when turning in assignments. And now, a bit for the month of May. May 12th will be the Spanish Honor Society annual dance. And on May 19th, LBHS sophomores are putting on Sadie Hawkins. The theme will be Disney Couples. On May 13th, LBHS senior parents will be putting on the annual senior banquet. The endless hard work of the few parents are putting on is greatly appreciated. May 17th will be LBHS scholarship night for seniors, and on May 19th, LBHS seniors alongside PHS seniors we will be participating in the annual senior walks. Students will have the chance to go back and visit the elementary schools. In early May, FFA students attended the California State Association FFA State Finals at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. LBHS Dairy Cattle Evaluation Team departed from the May Day Fair after a long week of showing and compete to compete in the State Finals Judging Contest. Two of the members made the top five overall and enough points for the team to edge out Turlock High School by a narrow three points. 
With the win at Cal Poly, the team advances to the national contest held at the National FFA Convention in Indianapolis at the end of October. On a historical note, this is the first dairy cattle evaluation team from the Los Banos FFA chapter to win the state championship since 1963. And that concludes my report. Thank you. All right. Lisette, thank you very much again. You're very welcome. Um, congratulations, and uh, I know you're off to great things. Thank, thank you for all your work that you've done for this thank this year. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Thank all you. right. Uh, next item is California School Employees Re Association report. Anybody here tonight? On to the Los Banos Teachers Association. Hi, Jennifer. Good evening. This week we celebrate Teacher Appreciation Week. I'd like to take a minute to acknowledge some of the amazing educators from LBUSD who had a huge impact on my life. Mrs. Julie Rice taught me to read in kindergarten. Mrs. Sparks, my first grade teacher, she provided a safe haven for a six-year-old who had a new baby brother who she, that she didn't like a whole lot. Um, and then she provided a place for a college student to observe and begin to learn love, to love teaching reading. Mr. Coleman closed the blinds on my entire eighth grade uh, history class for the entire year because he thought I was staring out the window when I was really just looking at a boy across the way. Uh, Mr. Pereira, who called me Jeff in front of the entire junior high school band, and I had to live through that because that's what he called me. Because we always called you Jeff. Because they always called me Jeff. Miss Emerson, who was my junior high English teacher, who was only here for a couple years, but she made teaching seem so glamorous. It was amazing. Mr. Ebner, anybody who had Mr. Ebner, uh, you learned how to write an essay and not use the words I, you, me, we, us, because you couldn't do that. And Mr. Orr, he taught me how to leave Juan at home when I was giving a speech because every time I won something, he got on me about how I pronounced it. Mr. Huddleston, who had the amazing patience of a saint and is still more involved in things today than you could possibly believe. Mr. Leffler, who in eighth grade, it was his first year, and somehow my eighth grade science class convinced him to let us raise eggs for a week as little babies. Um, I don't think he ever did that again. 26 years ago, I was a young, naive college senior who worked my butt off to graduate in three and a half years so I could get on with my life and do what I'd always dreamed of, becoming a teacher. I applied to one district, this one. I didn't even consider working anywhere else. This is my home. I remember jumping up and down on the couch and screaming when I got the call from Mr. Vralta, Mr. Vralta the same day I interviewed, offering me a job. My first year I taught sixth grade in the same classroom I attended sixth grade in with Mr. Limbloom. I found my name in the front of one of the science books Miss M was my VP, and I'd find class pictures and stories I'd written as a kid on the table in the teacher's lounge for Mr. West and Miss Moody, who had been my teachers and were now my colleagues. I heard stories about my brothers and sister from the teachers whom they had. I had a challenging class, but I never thought about quitting. Not when I was threatened with a knife. Not when the principal walked out during my very first observation because it was such a dumpster fire. I was in my classroom until eight or nine every night doing what I loved and trying to stay just one step ahead of the kids. The state standards were noon, new. We were handed a key, told good luck. Curriculum was what we came up with. And I think the learning that happened that year far exceeds what has happened many years since. That first year, I felt loved and appreciated by my colleagues, my school, and my district. I felt like I was part of something bigger than myself and would do things to help change the world. That as a team, we would change the world. I've been through a lot of administrators in 25 years. Some good, some bad, some, eh. But I've almost always felt supported until recently. Now it's a culture of cutthroat, where you get what you can, when you can, and let everyone else figure it out. I've been on many campuses lately, and the feeling is all the same. 
people feel defeated. Classified, certificated, and site administration all have a feeling of defeat. We have students who are out of control, and there's nothing we can do about it. Site administrators have had their hands tied by district-level administration. They are frustrated. We are frustrated. And we've all been told it's only going to get worse next year. This is the most top-down management I've seen in years, and it's not working. I can't even tell you how much money we're spending on solution trees for PLCs. But the trainers are even frustrated, which, by the way, we have done before several times. Mrs. Valadeo and I, along with Linda Russell and Patty Fishback, actually presented at a conference on this type of thing. It was called something else back then. But we've done this. We know how to do this and we can help ourselves. The presenters keep telling us, do what's best for kids. And over and over, we tell them we can't. And why not? Because we're given things, be it curriculum, mandated materials, or the latest and greatest app by district level administration and told that we must use it. Some of us veterans have taken the close the door policy and do what's best for kids idea. But our new teachers are trapped in a loop of doing things over and over again that don't work because they don't have any options. Isn't that the definition of insanity? Most of you sitting up there are parents or grandparents. You've all dealt with toddlers and school age kids and then teenagers at some point. And this year in negotiations was like going through an entire child's life in just a few months. We had the, but I want it now, complete with stomping and red faces, where the district refused to even discuss ways to make things more cost effective or take into account the opinions of people who are currently in the classroom and living it every day. Then we moved to the, but everybody else does it phase, where we got compared to everyone around us. I'm curious, did that ever work for you or your kids? I remember being told, well, if all of your friends jumped off a bridge, would you do it too? And then we ended with, maybe if we just try and sneak it in, no one will notice. Where the $2,000 one-time off schedule bonus that every other district employee received just mysteriously disappeared. We saw it. We got it back. And just like you, we just took a deep breath went back to explaining to them why our members would or wouldn't accept what was being pushed across the table. Our district leadership needs to take some time to reflect on how this year has gone. We've had our first full year of post-COVID life. Have we taken what we learned during that time and applied it? Or did we just go back to the status quo, which by the way, wasn't working very well for us then? We need communication lines to be open. We need all of you to actually listen to people in the classrooms who know what is working and what isn't. We need to have district level administration who don't go around telling other districts that LBTA is too strong and our contract is too good and we need to be dealt with. Or district administration who sit in countywide meetings and say, don't worry, our teachers are tired. They're going to fold any day now. We all know Las Vegas is a small town, and word gets around. But don't forget, so is Merced County. Neither of those comments gives me much confidence in our leadership, and I hope that they make you question them as well. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jennifer. On to uh, Superintendent's report, Dr. Marshall. Mm, thank you. Well, first off, uh, I want to say congratulations to our pentathlon winners again. I mean, that was um, an amazing accomplishment uh, for our district. Uh, Westside, um, uh, Ms. Ms. Schultz, and uh, Max Menefee, uh, kudos again, and good luck to them at Nationals. That's um, quite an accomplishment. What's interesting is that we had a lot more winners this year district-wide. If you look at uh, the number of schools, that place, I actually I put together a summary document that illustrates like the different schools that we had students to place. So that was, um, that's a plus. And um, 
Again, we want to uh, say kudos to all of the students and staff members for this amazing success. Uh, May is an interesting month because it's a month of recognition for our stellar employees. Uh, first of all, May 1st is Day of the Principal. Uh, May 5th is uh, School Lunch Hero Day. That's a new uh, date, new, I guess a new holiday that the state came up with um, last year. Uh, May 12th, I'll get, I'll get, I guess this week, yeah, Teacher Appreciation Week. And it's also National School Nurse Week. I mean, so it's kind of dual there. And then next week, we'll be celebrating our um, classified employees uh, next week. So what I want to do now, I have a presentation that I promised last time at the last board meeting that I was going to do. And I want to talk about um, our restricted um, resources. You know, so basically, the okay, next slide. Uh, funding sources are basically classified into, go back, two, they're either restricted or unrestricted. And tonight, like I promised last week, we're going to talk about uh, the restricted funds. Okay? Restricted funds are just that they can be spent on, on a specific purpose. So you see, like I have some examples as far as the after school program, categorical programs, uh, special ed, cafeteria, lottery, miscellaneous. So those, it's very, you know, very spelled out. So uh, that's one thing. If you, if it's a restricted fund, it'll be spelled out for you. Next. You have four categories that basically you, that you'll see where they fall in. You'll get like a lot of your um, categorical funds, a lot of grants. Uh, one thing that is kind of uh, nationally is kind of an issue is like the COVID with the pandemic, we received lots of um, district, you know, a lot, lot of money uh, assistance from uh, the state and federal government. And then there's money that's allocated for facilities as well. Next. So I want to kind of just give you, in terms of if you read our budget, you will see like there's certain uh, funds that have like a titles associated with them as far as um, the title, like Title I to Title Three. Then you have as far as student support and enrichment, expanded learning opportunities, homeless students, after school and special ed. You see the amounts there. But those amounts, but as you can see, if you can look at the amounts, that, those have to be spent on whatever those programs are. That's what you can spend it on. Just that category next page same thing you can see how everything is spelled out all of those the specific grants like a lot of your ct career technical programs your safety grants your uh cal ed partners grants um career tech everything is spelled out right next now these this is an interesting category these are the monies that when they had the pandemic where um Basically, you have your ESSER, all, all of your ESSER monies in terms of um, and di di in different monies that we received just to bring kids back to school after the pandemic. What's interesting, what you will see, and I think every district in America is kind of facing this, is that uh, well, your ESSER, a lot of your monies, they, they expire actually this year. Some of them expire this year and then in, some expire in 2024. In fact, with your special education monies, I, I had a meeting today where there was like a county meeting where they were talking about how do we spend this money by the, by, you know, by, the, by um, September of uh, this year. But these monies have a, sun, they have a sunset. Now the last block grant, uh, as far as our learning recovery block grant, you see that one, that's the only one that goes until 2028. The purpose of that grant is like, there's a lot of stuff that we were able to add with the, with the, with the current monies. And it, it, it was given to you in an attempt, you can't keep everything, but some of the things that you bought, that you put in place to serve students, you know, it was, it's, it's money to kind of keep some of that stuff alive. So that's what the purpose of that is. All right. On the next slide, I have basically a lot as far as like your categorical funding, your title funds, and it has all the allowable uses. I won't, I won't read that to you. But generally, when you're talking about the federal government and the state, if you're taking those funds, they have get very explicit planning the plans they have to get a broad approval they, they, they monitor it and such so that's that's crit that's critical next slide that's more of the same special education funds you can spend it on just that special ed you know you cannot take that and deviate from and spend it on general ed this is all designated for special education students next next uh slide deals with your career technical uh, monies Again, that's all for your career tech stuff. A lot of your, uh, a lot of our ag programs, our, our pathways, that's what these funds are used for, right? 
Then you have your restricted ESSER and learning loss funds. Now, what's interesting, I've highlighted two um, allowable uses that I want you to pay attention to. That, those two items, those are the ones that basically, that enabled us to put a lot of extra support in the schools. You know, a lot of schools have like more counseling, uh, mental health, uh, the additional ISI teachers, administrative support. That allowed us to do that as far as those two bullets around allowable uses. But again, as I said, come 2024, these funds sunset. So I want to just make sure I pointed that out. Next, you have uh, Fund 25 and Fund 40, uh, allowable uses. Um, and these is for your facilities. Basically, you know, those are, are, are facility monies. And we have to uh, maintain certain balances because we participate in the state reimbursement program. So it's critical that, you know, you spend, you have to keep your facilities up. If you're going to participate in those programs, they want, they're going to come and they inspect. They, you, may, you, have to, you have to keep your uh, facilities up. What's interesting, I want to show a picture. This is a picture right there. I'm pretty, uh, we're real proud of this picture. That's the Henry Miller parking lot. That's an example of what I'm talking about when you spend the money on what you're supposed to. You know, in terms of that, was, um, that project uh, was, uh, I guess we got, it was turned over to us um, today uh, as far as we met with the con contractors. And it looks real nice. I mean, they have like uh, landscaped and everything. And we have, a, we have a bond presentation later tonight. So, in the, in the final, the cafeteria fund, again, it's just that you spend it on cafeteria. I mean, it's cafeteria money, you spend it on just that. Now, when you look at, there are certain questions. I guess these are the three big questions when you talk about federal funds. Okay, first, uh, what they want to know is, what happens if you don't spend all the money in the current fiscal year? Basically, what happens is that, it, you know, you carry it over. Now, what's not good about that is that, you know, when you're dealing with the state and the federal government, if you have these high return, you know, balances every year, somebody's going to say you don't need it. If you're not spending it, you don't need it. So it's wise that you spend it every year. So I try to spend as much of it as possible. Next one is a very popular question. Can the district use restricted funds to pay for items that are paid for, you know, to pay for other stuff? No. If it's restricted, you spend it on what is specified for because you can get in a lot of trouble for doing that. Last question is kind of similar. Um, can you take restricted funds and then spend it on stuff that's like your operating expenses, like your routine stuff. No, you have to spend it on the allowable categories. If it's special ed money, you spend it on special ed. If it's cafeteria money, you spend it on the cafeteria. You know, very, it's very cut and dry. So what we'll be having in follow up to that, you can email me if you have questions and then we'll be having a budget 101 workshop. Um, this is next, uh, next week from 3.30 to 4.30. So that's my presentation there. So now I want to get back to um, negotiation. I'm talk about that briefly. Uh, one thing that was, I guess, was overlooked is that uh, we did um, complete, we do have a tentative agreement with um, the Los Angeles Teachers Association. Basically, it's a signed agreement. It's our agreement. So that concludes uh, the negotiation process for this year. I mean, I, I mean, I want to bring that fact out because we do have an agreement. And... Um, Again, the last point that I have is that uh, no Saturday is, I mean, Sunday is Mother's Day, but if you're not doing anything on Saturday, uh, I'll be serving pancakes for the uh, Los Banners Kiwanis. They have their Mother's Day breakfast, and I'll be serving pancakes there. So if you want to stop by, come by and get pancakes, I'll, I'll be happy to serve you. Mm -hmm. So I want to close by, um, you know, thanking all of our labor partners for uh, going through the process. We were able to reach agreements with all, those, with all, all of our labor partners. And, and um, sometimes, you know, you take the high road. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. Marshall. Next item on the agenda is our, oops, yeah, our facilities report. Jerry? Good evening, Welcome. board members, President uh, Pereira and Dr. Marshall. Um, I'm going to be doing my facilities update for May 11th. Um, this front slide is Lofton Stadium, and um, left picture, you can see the garbage enclosure. Um, walls have been completed. Um, this middle area is, is the front um, where the bus will be pulling in and dropping, loading, and unloading students. And this will also be the ADA parking. Um, this kind of comes right up off of um, 7th Street. In a little bit, I'll talk about some of the off-site improvements we need to do for this area. 
And then the picture on the right is the four-foot perimeter track fence that's going to go all the way around the track. Um, so continuing on Lofton, um, building 100 and building 300, the team rooms and the restrooms, um, they're kind of mirroring each other. So basically all the metal roofing is complete. Um, we're going to turn that over to the solar contractor starting Monday. Um, so they'll be working at the same time we're finishing the project. Um, the tile work in the restrooms, you can see in these pictures, um, one of them, they're a lot further um, than the other. They're grouting all of them. Um, they're tape, texturing, and painting the inside of the rooms. And then the, this picture here, you can see the gentleman, they're doing the polished concrete floor. So on the right-hand side, the smaller picture, that is actually the finished floor, and that is, that's, it's complete. Um, so they're going from building to building, room to room, finishing that. Um, the exterior thin brick, brick veneer will be complete on 100, and then 300, they'll complete that next week. Um, the glass for the windows is expected to come in, and they'll be installing that, so this, the buildings will be all sealed up. And then the electrical and plumbing finishes, they're starting to install those kind of equipment. So in the right-hand picture, you can see um, that's for the security system. So they're starting to put all those things in place. Um, the, two, the building 200 concession stand in the ticket booth, um, the roofing is complete. It's not a metal roofing on that one. It's a different type of roofing. Um, the tape texture and painting on the inside is complete. And they are, um, by now, they should have already done the concrete floor. They were going to move from that one they were doing straight to this building. Um, and, and we have already ordered the kitchen equipment. Some of it has already arrived. Some um, is still on order. And um, the painting and thin brick will be complete next week. I'm not sure if I already said that. Um, for the site work, um, it, it, these pictures look kind of messy, but um, this is what's going on. Um, we, we, we have installed our fence post for the north perimeter fence. Um, that's the left-hand picture here, um, the very bottom left. You can see them kind of going down in a line. Um, on, on next to that is the four-foot um, perimeter track fence. And um, we have our transformer set, so the um, site has electricity, getting ready to get that all fired up. Um, our backflow was tested yesterday, and the entire site will be graded next week. Um, the lights are up. They, they work. I'm not sure if they have them on every night right now, but they do work. And... Um, the off-site improvements that need to be um, done on the 7th Street side. So currently there's a roll curb there, and that is going to remain. Um, but we've had to go back to the city of Los Banos and ask them for some modifications because that roll curb must have been when everybody drove trucks or really high cars because, like, my vehicle would not make it up over that roll curb. So we're having to go back and do some additional modifications to the front area there. Um, so, so, but that should not hold up um, any of the site work because those are all off-site improvements. So, um, and then some other things. Um, they have submitted additional rain um, weather delays. Um, so next board meeting, I will be bringing basically January, February, March, and April rain days. Um, so right now with that, um, we are at the end of July for completion date. Um, the HVAC units are still have a tentative ship date of 617. So I, I check with them continuously. That's what they keep telling me. We hope that that sticks. Um, so that is Lofton. So as Dr. Marshall mentioned today, and it was really nice, he happened to be there when we were doing kind of our little um, turnover site walk. So um, that was a nice um, surprise. So um, the district staff, our, our MNO staff was trained today, electrician, landscapers were there um, to kind of learn about, you know, the equipment they installed, the gates. Um, the fire department came out and gave us approval, so um, we have a few little things to do tomorrow, but we expect on Monday that staff should be able to start parking in there. Um, we have provided gate codes and keys. Um, I just need to get some closeout documents from the contractor, and there's a few um, punch item lists, so we'll make sure they take care of that. 
um, the gates are have an exit loop so nobody's ever going to get trapped inside so if they're parked in there the gates are closed they drive up to it it's going to come out they're going to open up and they can come out um, so everything is moving along nicely there pretty much finished and the final thing I wanted to um, share with you tonight is about our early education center the TK Center um, I wanted to share the preliminary site plan um, we have some challenges with the site um, that we've selected just because of an easement that goes through as well as some power lines that are on East B Street. So we need to have the classrooms kind of located where they are. Um, so this is our preliminary site plan. It will very there will be very little um, changes to this at this point. Um, we're still going through the traffic study and the CEQA process, so we need to wait to make sure those studies come back. Um, but other than that, this will be basically the preliminary site plan for the TK Center. This is the preliminary classroom layout. So there will be classrooms back to back where they have a shared teacher's workroom and they have a restroom inside the classroom and then storage and cabinet area for the teacher. And then this is a preliminary um, layout of the office, the MPR, and the serving kitchen. So this is basically um, fashioned after Mercy Springs. So looks very similar to that. That was my that was my sample school. So um, I wanted to just share that with you. And next um, board meeting, I hope to be bringing um, the actual building, the, the 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 bid package for the building. So we should be able to bid those out. Um, I need to get permission to go forward with that. Um, buildings have a very long lead time, so that's why we would need to do that um, before we do any of the site work or anything. So, And that is my report. Unless you guys have any questions any or questions? comments. Any questions for Sherry? All right, seeing none. Thank, Thank you, Sherry. You. On to board member reports. Uh, let's start with Mr. Lieb tonight. Well, well, thank you. I just have a few things here. So um, I enjoy attending all the school events. There's just a lot of things happening right now. Too many to mention tonight, but uh, there are four topics, four top things I'd like to talk about. So one was the Winter Garden percussion at Los Banos High on the 19th. Uh, love that, and particularly all the time and energy that went into the practice uh, for these students. Uh, the second was the uh, Mercy Springs Elementary Ag Day on the 21st. It was their first ever Ag Day. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, Lorena Falasco's Ag Day being held on my birthday, Wednesday. And um, third is the Las Vegas Elementary School Library. Um, the corporate leaders from Dollar General in Tennessee flew in and met with students on the 18th and presented Principal Renee Leonard with a check for $30,000. Uh, so thank you for Dollar General for helping with our students learn how to read. Um, and fourth is uh, an example of uh, the circle of life. So um, similar to what Jennifer Wilkins talked about, um, I had the pleasure of attending the uh, April 22nd Miano Elementary um, annual mileage club 5K run. Um, I was um, informed that it started in 2016 by Miano teacher uh, Mrs. Pat McNally, who is now retired. And one of the areas, one of the ideas behind the event she had was to help students stay healthy with exercise and um, with the exception of COVID, the fun run has been taking place every year at Pacheco High Track. And um, uh, Miano principal Zelda Diaz Harper um, told me that every student in the school, 899 students all signed up to participate and they held practices to help condition the students for the event. And it wasn't a race, um, uh, students could run, jog, walk. Uh, I was there. And um, I met a fifth grade teacher named Kylie Cardoza, and she was actually jogging with her students around the track. And I found out that Ms. Cardoza is the granddaughter of Pat McNally. And uh, so Ms. Cardoza is carrying on the tradition that her grandma started. And um, what's even more special is that Ms. Cardoza teaches in the same classroom that her gr grandmother taught in at Miano. Um, so thank you to Pat and Kylie for choosing Los Banos. And finally, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers who have in the past and are currently making sacrifices 
to help their children be the best they can be. And um, last note is that I was, I'm a, I'm a member of the Los Banos Rotary Club and Marg was um, a member, of course. And so um, we shared a lot of uh, similar interests in helping the community. So I'm very happy to see that Marg is being celebrated and that ends my report. Thank you. All right, thank you. Ms. Catuso. <laughs> um, I also want to thank thank schools and programs for the invitations that we receive. It's wonderful. There's so many. Um, we try to attend as much as we can. Um, this this month, I attended a couple of the music programs. I was able to attend Mama Mia, which I absolutely loved. It was wonderful production. If you didn't get to see it, you really missed a good production. I'm looking forward to Saturday for um, Wizard of Oz at, at Creekside. Um, I also attended the, the Las Banas High Band, the Spring Into Love, silent auction and live auction dinner. And if you ever go to watch the kids serve, dinner is just amazing. They come out with their arm in, behind them and they make sure everybody at the table is all served at the same time. I, I don't get that service a lot of times when I go to a paid restaurant. So <laughs> it was pretty awesome. So they did a wonderful job. Um, a couple of things. I did go to the high school's art show, but they will be, as Jacinta said earlier, they will be at the Los Banos uh, Arts Council's Ted Falasco. They're going to have a senior on, for the senior, um, their artwork on May 23rd. And that should be a really nice, nice event. So I hope you can go and see that. And the reason why I'm talking about the Arts Council, because I am a, on the board of the Arts Council, so it's nice to be working with the schools. We also are going to be hosting um, Creekside's, uh, the Pop Awards, the band on May 25th there as well. So hope to see you there. My last thing is Ag Day at Mercy Springs. Thank you, Amy, for asking me. I filled in uh, <laughs> for a short notice. I filled in one of the rooms. I hope I did okay. <laughs> uh, it was so fun. And thank you today for dropping off the gift from the kids. Uh, they wrote letters, and so it was just so cute. And then I also got something just now for reading at Westside at the preschool. So this, these are things that I'll just cherish. So thank you so much. And that's about all I have tonight. Great. Thank you. Ms. Smith. Good evening. I think I, I haven't done a whole lot this year. I, I had been on vac this month. I've been on vacation, but I came back and I did get to finish up the Los Banas uh, Pacheco High School track team for the girls. And I also got to finish up the softball league with the girls um, out there for the last couple of weeks, which has been really nice to see the kids play. Um, I was at the gym the other night, and I saw Mr. Diablo on the news. He got an award, so congratulations to him for that. And then I want to congratulate the students from FFA and all the students actually in our district for being good students and coming to school. I mean, we're trying to get that number to increase. But what we have, we're, we're, we're proud of the students and want to continue to encourage them to um, want to be good students and want to, and want to come to school. And, and I say that because I have two grandchildren that struggle sometimes to get here, but... Um, the last call that they, the last voice they hear before they leave the house is from grandma, and they usually have no problem getting up after we talk to go to school. <laughs> so just, uh, that, that's pretty much it. Um, vacation was wonderful. I was really happy to be over in Europe for first time. Um, trip there, um, went to Berlin and Rome and Paris and London, and it was, uh, it was nice. It was a whirlwind trip, but I found out there that people are the same all over the world. They're no different than we are in the United States. They're people, they love their country like we love our country. We love our country and they, they're very much like us. I mean, I just couldn't see a comparison um, that was so different than all of us all over the world. And it was it's just very multicultural and I saw every walk of life there, every nationality was there. So it, it was nice to see that people um, assimilate and get along with you all over the world. Yeah, all right, thank you. Yeah. Ms. Valdale. Well, I just want to thank teachers because this is the week of the teacher. I have a short little poem that I think is very effective. It says, thank you for all that you do in your classroom, for making a million little split 
second decisions for the benefit of your students, for putting your own needs on hold and keeping the focus on your day, for planning for them long before the day ever starts, for changing those plans because they didn't fit someone who needed a little extra, for smiling, laughing with them, and reassuring their efforts, trials, and mistakes, for placing your hand on a shoulder that was exactly what someone needed, for getting down on the physical level of your students because it matters, for thinking of new ways to reach someone who wasn't getting it. You matter. Yes, you matter. Thank you, teachers. And that's it. All right. <laughs> Ms. Moran. Um, also, kudos to the students. I had the pleasure to hear that Spanish uh, FFA creed. And uh, for somebody that thinks they have spoken Spanish their whole life, that was impeccable Spanish. And I said, oh, my goodness, I probably need to sign up for our own Spanish class, right? So, <laughs> my goodness, amazing work. Uh, the same can be said for Mamma Mia. Just an amazing performance. I literally was like, it's Broadway here. Like, I, I put myself back in high school and couldn't imagine myself even having the time, right, uh, to juggle school, uh, all the hours put in. I, I, again, I can't even imagine. So kudos to everyone down to uh, literally lights and, and everything. It takes a, a village, and it was very evident that everybody came together for that. Um the music showcases, again, I could probably go on like other board members mentioned, but it's been amazing. Uh, I look forward to graduations, the banquet, uh, CSE end of year, and uh, scholarship nights. Those are kind of like the big kudos for somebody that's in education to be looking at our students at the finish line to say kudos, you made it, you know, onto something bigger. Uh, with that said, on my own journey and my personal life, uh, next month I will be missing because I'm entered entering my dissertation so I'm prepping and so I have my summer intensive and so I will have to be missing uh, next month's board but uh, keep me in your thoughts as I enter a dissertation proposal in the fall with hopefully a defense following spring so uh, I will keep you looped but yeah I will miss everyone and with that said I'm, I'm good right. thank you all right Mr. Vinos hello everyone yeah I'd like to start off with the, the music showcase Okay, it was over at uh, Los Bonos High School. The Winter Guard and Percussion, I was watching. That considered of, uh, consisted of Los Bonos High, Pacheco High, Creekside Junior High, and Los Bonos Junior High. Really great performance. It was really nice sitting in the stands and talking with the students and parents. They were talking about their grandchildren, their child. Uh, I was talking to some kids that their sisters and brothers were in the band. But really nice event. Then I also to, uh, attended the um, the bands over at Los Banos High School. Okay, <clears throat> on the music showcase. On that there, there was Los Banos High, Creekside High School, Henry Miller Elementary, Charleston Elementary, Los Banos Elementary, and Mercy Springs Elementary. What a performance. It's really, really great to see all these kids perform, come together, and all the hard work that they put together. I was really, really amazed. I also attended uh, Miano Mileage Club 5K run at Pacheco High. Now, that was another event nice to see from sixth grade to first grade. This is uh, Zelda uh, Diaz. That was, uh, that was really great to watch. Went out there and I saw everyone. I saw parents giving um, their kids something to drink. I saw the kids running, having a good time. Uh, four times around, they would win a medal, okay, for their participation, but at least four times. But it was really a good, great event. I really had a good time. The snack bar, ate two hot dogs and a Coke. Never do that, but I did it anyway. It was great. Thank you very much. Then, I attended Mamma Mia. Again, that was another performance that uh, everybody should have attended. I agree with you, Mrs. Tiso. It was great. I mean, uh, singing, they were all together. 
uh, couldn't seen a better play. I mean, I was just astounded. And thank you for that. That was great. Then here I have <clears throat> Parent Leadership Training Institute. Okay, they're on their they're on their last stretch. Four weeks to go, and they graduate. It's been a long twenty weeks. Okay, they'll be graduating on June twelfth. Okay, at the Los Banos Fairgrounds at six p.m. You got to give these parents. A lot of credit for attending and learning the politics on what they need to do in uh, in our city. I really, I got really got to thank them. I attend every other week to uh, to talk with this, these parents and hear some of their concerns. And they have a lot. They have a lot of concerns. And uh, so I work with them. I take it to the administration, give it to them, and we help them. We give them the time of day and look into their uh, their concerns on what they like to see happen in the district. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gary. All right. Um, gosh, almost repeat of what everybody said. Um, uh, so going last, I have to do that. I will say that the, the band showcase was really cool. Um, they did four nights of music, and it was the four different nights – Four nights in a row, um, a presentation of the different uh, groups. First night was choir, second night was uh, drumline, and they had uh, the uh, the bands that fed into uh, Creekside and the bands, uh, excuse me, uh, Pacheco and the bands that fed into Los Banos High. Um, I got to MC three of the nights, so I got firsthand uh, stage presence for the, all those, and it was really cool. I mean, I know sitting in the audience is one thing, but being up on stage and watching the kids and the excitement that they had um, was was absolutely phenomenal. So I was really honored to be uh, the MC for those uh, three nights, for three of the nights. Um, I know that the other night was absolutely fantastic too. Um, but uh, it was it was a great thing, and, and they 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 are planning to do it again next year. So don't miss it. Um, uh, same thing with Mama Mia, and uh, was wonderful. I'm really looking forward to the Wizard of Wizard of Oz on Saturday. Um, and just another congratulations and kudos to all of our FFA kids, our pentathlon um, students, and our retirees. They all have worked hard for this district, and we're really proud of them. Um, yesterday, uh, I went to um, the uh, LEAP um, STEM Fair at Lorena Falasco, uh, and it was so cool. Um, the LEAP program is our after-school program, and uh, they brought in the LEAP uh, van from Merced County Office of Education, and the kids had four different stations, and they were so involved and so in tune to what was going on and so uh, active in everything they were doing. It was it was an exciting time for all of the, our LEAP students, and so uh, I want to thank uh, Mr. Cruz for bringing that group in to, uh, to share with uh, – our, our LEAP students, it, it was a phenomenal thing. And they are coming back, I think, to two more elementaries and our Los, and the Los Banos Junior High School. So I know those students will have a great um, experience uh, with that LEAP program uh, coming in. So it, it was really cool. Um, lots of other things going on. There's a bunch of music concerts. I attended a Los Banos Junior High music concert, uh, Pops concert last night when they gave all the awards. And it brought back lots of memories because... I used to do that, um, give away lots of awards at the Pops concert. And so it's something I, um, I it brought back uh, kind of a kudos uh, memories for me. Um, it was really fun. Um, reading in the classrooms is one of the things we all love to do. And I, I want to thank uh, the uh, Intermiller Pre-K. I, I read over there uh, twice and they they gave me this little thank you. Thanks for popping in with some pictures and some popcorn. So that'll be dinner tonight. Um, so I'm looking that that's great. And the other thing is, is um, in my other life, uh, I am a parade judge. And uh, so I had the opportunity of sitting at the judges stands for May Day uh, and watching um, all the bands that, that went by. We had bands from, of course, all four schools in Las Banas, um, the two junior highs, two high schools, and then there are bands from, um, you know, Dos Palos, Merced, and other counties around us. Uh, 
and it was just great to see those bands come through and you can tell how hard they worked uh to prepare to do their performance in front of the judges stand and for the whole parade so i give some kudos to all the band kids who spent a lot of hours i know how much time it takes because i lived that world for a long time um and to their band directors and staff for uh making los banas proud so um thank you for uh sharing that i did not judge bands um that's one of the things i i I, I judge bands everywhere else I go, um, but I don't judge bands in Los Banas because I don't want anybody says you're doing something favorite. So I judge floats and cars and everything else. And there were four other judges that judged the bands, but uh, um, it was it was great to see them out there and uh, representing Los Banas. So thank you all for doing that. All right, we are on to new business finally. Uh, oh my gosh, it's only a quarter to nine. <laughs> And accepted it into Sac State. Oh, Congratulations. yes. Yeah. Didn't know that. Well, congratulations and have fun. Sacramento, all right. Uh, item A on new business resolution 1221 authorization for issuance of uh, general obligation bonds. And Amir, would you like to? Uh... Good evening. Uh, this is a Resolution for the issuance of sales of geo bond for series 2023. We have Jason, Mr. Jason Chung, our bond consultant. He's going to say a few words. Good evening, board members. Good My evening. name Welcome. is Jason Chung. I'm with the Fieldman Rollout and Associates, and we've served as the district's financial advisor for a little over 10 years now. And tonight we have an item for your consideration to approve the second bond issuance of Measure X. And Measure X was a bond measure approved by your voters back in 2018 for $65 million. And so when bond measures are passed, districts don't receive the, the entire $65 million on day one. We need to issue it in certain phases as your tax base continues to grow. And so, so far the district has sold $23.5 million. And tonight we're looking to issue about 20 more million of that authorization. And then the remaining 21 and a half million, that's probably going to be issued a few years down the road. And so when Measure X was passed, it was set up as a no tax rate increase. So really since 2018, your tax rate on Measure X has been kept fairly consistent at the $48 level. And even when we issue future debt, it's expected to rise no more than that level because of your assessed value growth. And so should we get your approval tonight, that would allow us to price your bonds at the end of May we would close in early June, and that point, your district would receive the approximately 19.7 million in funds. And so that was a pretty high-level overview, but I'm available for any questions as well. All right. Any questions? Thank you. We're going to let them sell, sell $20 million worth of bonds. That works. All right. With that, if no questions, I need a motion. There's no public hearing. No, there's no public here. No. Need a motion, please? I make a motion. Resolution 1200. We got a motion by Member uh, Valadeo, seconded by Member Munoz, to adopt the resolution 1223, authorization for issuance of general obligation bonds in the election of the 2018 series 2023 of Los Manus Unified School District in the aggregate principal amount not to exceed $20 million. It's a roll call vote. Tina. Mrs. Gattuso. Yes. Mr. Lieb. Yes. Ms. Moran. Yes. Mr. Munoz. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Ms. Valadeo. Yes. Mr. Pura. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Appreciate it being here. All right, on to item B. It's our dual language immersion program presentation. Welcome, Ms. Marino. Good evening. I'm really excited. Um, for the past year, we have been working, or I have been working with a great team, a wonderful team um, who's committed and um, ready to do the work. Uh, we started back in September, October, November. We've been meeting with um, a CABE representative, and CABE stands for California Association of Bilingual Teachers or Educators, and we have been getting ready and planning for our first dual language immersion program. 
And today we have the team who has been working hard all year long, uh, getting ready to begin our program in August. So we do have a PowerPoint somewhere. Okay, so I wanted to introduce our team. We have Ms. Renee Leonard, she's the principal of L LBE. Carolina Garcia, she is our secretary who's been doing a lot of the legwork, calling, sending emails, sending letters. We have um, Laura Borrego, she is, thank you, she is a, a teacher at Los Baños High School, but will be our kindergarten teacher for our dual language immersion. We have Lorraine Gerardo, thank you, um, the admin secretary at LBE. And then we have Maria Barbosa. She joined our team in February. She will be teaching a, one of the first grade um, DLI classes. Ready, ladies? And then we do have Dr. Richie, who is also, who's also in our team, Eric Sowersby. Er, Eric Sowersby. And um, our consultant is Natalie Longoria. I believe I have everybody else. Oh, and, ja and we also had a parent or have a parent, Janet Oropesa, who couldn't be with us today because it is her mom's birthday. So, ready? I'm ready. Okay. All right. So what is dual language immersion or DLI? Dual language immersion is a way to learn academic content while acquiring another language at the same time. For LBUSD, it is Spanish. That is the language that instruction will be delivered. Okay. Overall, proficient bilinguals perform mo outperform monolinguals in creativity, problem solving, mental flexibility, attention to detail, working memory, conflict management, and the ability to change between tasks with ease. Good evening. The mission. Los Baños Unified School District believes that one of the biggest gifts we can give our student is bilingualism. Therefore, we commit to ensure that students are bilingual, biliterate, and cross-culturally aware learners. Our DLI program will prepare our students for a global, ever-changing, and competitive world. Our students will be self-confident individuals who feel connected to two cultures, two languages, and their community. Our dual language immersion students will demonstrate high levels of academic achievement in Spanish and English, communicate effectively in both languages socially and academically, understand and develop an appreciation for diverse cultures, value, contribute to and connect with their diverse community and family members, take pride and be self-confident in their bilingualism. Our program is going to follow the 90-10 model. And the 90-10 model is where students will receive, uh, starting in kindergarten, 90% of the instruction will be in English, uh, Spanish, which is the target language, and 10% will be done in English. In first grade, um, the instruction will then be 80% in Spanish, 20% English, second grade, 70-30, third grade 60 40 and then fourth fifth and sixth the instruction is going to be 50 percent um, in Spanish and 50 percent um, in English um, this year we are starting oh can you go back go back one okay um, this year we are going to be starting a k1 so we're going to begin our first graders with 90 10 instead of a 80 20. Um, we're going to do 90-10 like the kindergartners, and then we're going to increase 
80, 20, um, second grade, third grade, 70, 30. And then in fourth grade, they're supposed to be at 50, 50. At that time, we are going to monitor those students and evaluate those students. And if we are able to do a 50, 50 at that mo at that time, we will consider doing 50, 50. If not, we will do a 60, 40 for the first half of the year and then move to 50, 50 the other half of the year and then fifth and sixth, they are going to receive 50-50. Our expansion plan is uh, to begin this year with uh, K-1 and 24-25 due at second grade, so we will be K-2. Um, the following year, we will add third grade and be K-3, and then we're going to add fourth the following year in 27-28, we're going to add fifth and 28-29 add sixth grade. So by 2028-2029, 20, we um, plan on being a K-6 school. Good evening. So for this last year, we, <clears throat> we met several times, um, and the days we met were... November 15th and 16th, January 24th and 25th, February 7th and 8th, and April 11th. We learned about the dual language immersion philosophy, selected program model-based research, developed mission statement and goals, created DLI brochure, along with the frequently asked questions fact sheet, developed uh, dual language immersion program request forms, commitment forms, and acceptance slash waitlist letters. Parent informational meeting uh, that we had uh, for Spanish and English. We created a dual language immersion flow chart for site secretaries. We conducted the lottery drawing, created a list of students accepted and students on the waitlist made phone calls to parents of students selected, sent out acceptance and wait list letters. Uh, letters were, are due back by May 26th. And we also uh, had a school site visit in Riverbank, which was a, a really good visit. Number of, uh, we also had a number of parents uh, that applied. We had a total of 233 request forms that were submitted and from that, we were only able to select 124 uh, students, um, which was due to the number of classes per grade level that is being offered. We also attended a Kabe conference on March 22nd through the 25th. Good evening. Buenas noches. Um, we have uh, selected uh, well, to continue our progress, we have selected, um, they have selected DLI teachers for, um, teachers have selected the curriculum. Uh, for ELA, uh, we chose Maravillas, which is standard aligned. Uh, for math, we're going to be using Go Math. And then for science, um, we'll use the district adopted program and they're going to be piloted next year. Uh, report cards were developed. Uh, or being developed by DLI teachers. Um, again, staff was selected, four teachers were selected, two kindergarten and two first grade, and paraprofessionals uh, are in process of being hired. Uh, furniture and materials was also ordered for the classrooms. Um, next steps, we will be meeting on May 16th and 17th. Uh, we'll develop a DLI master plan, uh, work on the daily schedule, uh, prepare for the first day of the DLI in August. Uh, we will be attending a summer conference focused on DLI. Um, also, we will be meeting, as te we teachers will be meeting to plan in the summer. And uh, we'll give notification to school sites of which students will participate in the DLI program. So we still have a lot of work to do. <laughs> So we have done quite a bit. We still have quite a bit to do. Um, any questions that you may have for the team? So is, it's just two classes per grade right now? Yes. And that's going to continue up. Are, is there any plan to expand that? 
later that will on. be based that will be based on interest as we move along and so, as you saw we we had 244 um, interest submissions and we were only able to take 124 at this point so, and and it's all going to be housed at LBE. Is there is a plan correct. to expand that beyond LBE or not at this time? Okay. And I, I think as time time will tell how much interest we have from the community. Um, we do have it's a sixty five uh, percent of our students are, need to be Spanish speaking, and the other thirty five did I do my math right? Thirty five percent English uh, English only speakers. So very cool. Ms. Valdeo. That was my question. I was going to say, what are the makeup of the class? So 65? 35. 65, 35. And is the 65, when you say Spanish speaking, is it Spanish only or they can have Spanish English? The Spanish would be their first, their, their primary, primary language, language. yes. Mm -hmm. And then the 35 would be English only. Right, their primary language, correct. And do you have the other two teachers hired? We do. They have been selected. They are... I'm very excited. We're very excited. Two of them have experience teaching in a DLI program. So they are coming from Hollister. They're, they have been living in Los Baños for a long time. But because they wanted to teach in a DLI school, they were commuting. And when they saw this opportunity, they applied. And, and so we're excited. We have experience. We're well, excited have... about this because we've heard about it. I mean, I attended a conference a while. Well, it's been years ago when they talked about this program, and it was it was really excited at the time, exciting at the time, and I'm glad it's finally made it to Las Panas. Yes, it's very exciting. We have parents that are incredibly excited, and they and they're calling if they're on the wait list. My child is number seven, or my child is. What are my opportunities? What are my chances? And and be, on May 26th, is the deadline for parents who um, got selected through the lottery. If they do not turn in their their acceptance, then we will start going down the the list. So that will make some parents very happy. Mm -hmm. cool. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank and, again, you. I work with a wonderful team that they've been doing the work. I just kind of show up. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you all for what you've done. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Next up is item C, which is a presentation by our DLAC. Good evening again. Hey, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. So not only have I been very fortunate to be working with a great DLI team, I have also been very fortunate to work with an incredible um, group of parents. Um, they are tenacious and very, very persistent. Um, our DLAC, the District uh, English Learner Advisory Committee, were collaboratively, collaborate, this is my EL in me, to ensure that topics of interest and that guest speakers presented at our DLAC meetings to support them in their learning to help their children. Um, it has been, this is why I can't see. Aha! Uh -huh. It has been a great year of learning, uh, collaborating, encouraging each other. They are here tonight to share some highlights of our year together. Muy buenas noches. Um, venimos a presentar nuestro reporte anual. Tuvimos juntas de DILAC, conferencias de CABE, una el 6 de diciembre en Monterrey, California, La otra fue eh, del 22 al 25 de marzo en Long Beach. Visitamos la Universidad de Sacramento, conferencia Soñar en Grande, recaudación de fondos mmm, del programa migrante para los estudiantes que van a ir a la universidad. Visitamos algunas escuelas y tendremos ceremonia de reclasificación. Yeah, hi, good evening. Uh, the year of the glance, uh, we had the like DLAC meetings every month. Also, we went to the CAFE conferences on Monterey on December 6th, and also on March 22, 25, we went to Long Beach. Uh, we had the opportunity to visit uh, Sacramento University, 
also the B Dream Big Conference, um, Merced. Uh, we went to the migrant fundraiser. Uh, we had more than 24 people from Los Vanos. Also, we have a school site visits, and we're going to have their reclassification ceremony uh, the next Saturday, May 20th. Hemos visto durante y en los recorridos de las visitas a las escuelas, estudiantes participando en conversaciones orales, estudiantes trabajando en grupos, en parejas e independientemente, maestros trabajando con estudiantes en grupos pequeños, el medio ambiente escolar muy positivo, dichos inspiracionales alrededor de las aulas y en las escuelas, laboratorios de ciencias, tecnología, ingeniería y matemáticas, agendas en las clases, objetivos de las lecciones expuestas y finalmente nos hemos sentido bienvenidas en las escuelas. Okay, this is what we see during the school site visit. Uh, we see the students engaged in oral conversation. Also, the students were working in groups, partners, and independently. The teachers were working with the small groups. Also, we saw the positive school environment, inspirational saying around the classroom and also around the school. Uh, we, had this, we see the steam labs, schedules, posts in many classrooms, also lesson objectives in many classrooms too. And we were really happy about the experience to be in campus. We feel really co welcome and we thank all the principals who let us do the, the visits. ¿Qué nos gustaría ver? laboratorios en cada escuela, todas las escuelas participando en competencias del condado y más oportunidades para que los padres participen en talleres. Yeah, we would like to see every school having the STEAM labs. Also, uh, more participation for all the schools in the county competition, like Spelling Bee, Pentathlon, so all the, all the kids on the district had the opportunity. And also, we would like to see more parents' opportunities to, particip to participate in parent workshops. Temas y presentaciones en las reuniones de DILAC. Ah. Les van a pasar por ahí unas imágenes. Algunos fueron drogas y los efectos secundarios, nutrición y bebidas saludables, estrés y bienestar emocional, qué puedo hacer para ayudar a mi hijo a tener éxito en la escuela, requisitos de la A a la G e inscripción doble, importancia de la asistencia escolar, la importancia del examen ELPAC, reclasificación, seguridad en las escuelas, y por Dr. Marshall y la importancia de enseñarle a nuestros hijos su historia familiar, qué es el programa migrante y sus servicios que ofrece y señales de que nuestros hijos están teniendo dificultades y cómo ayudarles. So those are some of the topics that we covered during, during the DILAC meetings. We were talking about drugs and its effects. It was the officer Rivas who helped us to give the information. Also, we had nutrition and healthy drinks. We had topic about the stress and social emotional well-being. We had a, we had help knowing what can we do to help the child to be successful in a school. Also, we had AG requirements and the information about the the, the dual enrollment. We talk about the importance of a school attendance, the LPAC and it is its importance also. We were talking about the reclassification. Also, we had Dr. Marshall who gave us all the information about the school safety. Uh, we talk about the import importance of teaching our children about our family history. Also, we get a lot of information about the migrant education and migrant program services. And uh, we had information that we saw about the DLI, the dual language. And we talk about the signs that my child is having difficult is having difficulty and how to help them. Those are the, some, some, some of the pictures that we took about the different events that we were talking about. Esta última de, diapositiva, teníamos el entrenamiento de uh, el Instituto de Capacitación en Liderazgo de Padres con un avance de 18 semanas, están por graduarse. 
Les faltan dos más y este ha sido nuestro reporte gracias a la Junta Escolar y al Distrito. Um, les traemos una invitación formal para el evento de reclasificación que se va a llevar a cabo el día 20 de mayo. Ok, so uh, we were talking about the PLTI Party Leadership Training Institute and also we're going to give some invitation for the next event that we're going to have the ceremony of reclassification and we are really thank thankful to all the school board and also the district for the, import for the opportunity for the parents to be involved. And we're going to let some video that you can see with some of the parents who have been going to the different events. Uh, para mí pensar en CABE es capacitación, información, enriquecimiento, cultura, conexiones, convivencia, salir de la rutina, compañerismo. Para mí CABE es una fuente muy importante de aprendizaje para nosotros los padres y traer a nuestra comunidad. Para mí CABE fue una enseñanza maravillosa y una experiencia para aprender mucho para ayudar a mi hijo. CABE para mí es una propuesta el, para la educación a través de programas, de experiencias, de cosas educativas para nuestros hijos, para aprender el, el idioma inglés y una propuesta también para los papás y para los maestros que nos enseñan para educar a nuestros hijos, para ayudar. Para mí CABE es una gran experiencia, una gran herramienta de aprendizaje con la cual voy a poder ayudar a mis hijos, no solo a, a implementar el idioma inglés, sino también el, cualquier otro idioma como el español, y una gran experiencia de vida. Y aprendí que como padres no traemos un manual para educar a nuestros hijos, así es que tenemos que seguir enfocándonos en aprender, y por el bien de nuestra familia y la comunidad. De que en casa no debo de dejar de hablar español, de que debo de apoyar a mi comunidad, en todo lo nuevo que, que viene porque los vanos vamos a hacer un, un este programa de doble inversión la necesidad de, de querer aprender más independientemente de que los talleres son muy pequeños y son únicamente pinceladas pero nos genera esa necesidad de buscar la información buscar esos esos cursos traerlos a nuestra comunidad para mí fue una experiencia inolvidable pues, mm. Fue motivación, fue una enseñanza que uno puede convivir con las familias también. Que no hay que dejar de, de, de dejar el español, que el español es muy importante, es muy fuerte. Y a, 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 a decirle a otros padres que también se involucren, que no nada más somos nosotras, que también tienen que ser de más padres para poder apoyar a nuestros hijos. Uh, tenemos que trabajar, tenemos que hacer nuestros quehaceres, tenemos que hacer todo lo rutinario, pero esto hace un, un paro, ya uh, que la rutina a veces nos mata ver cada segundo de nuestros niños, como su sonrisa, su llanto, cómo manejar aquello, cómo ver aquello, cómo hacer la diferencia en, en el día a día de nuestros niños. No todo es perfecto, pero sí viene uno con uh, pilas o energía diferente. Uh, no traemos un manual para educar a nuestros hijos, pero sí tenemos muchas herramientas para seguir aprendiendo y para llevarlos por un mejor camino. Este, sabemos que muchas veces el educar, pensamos que educar con gritos, con golpes, es la mejor manera para educar y no es cierto. Lo único que reflejamos en ellos es este, su autoestima baja, como padres, este, hacemos que se alejen de nosotros. Y es lo que nos ha dado la oportunidad, este, este, cabe, ¿verdad? El, el darnos la oportunidad de que sabemos que podemos educar con amor y con, con firmeza, con firmeza para que ellos realmente vean que, que sí se puede salir adelante y que todos podemos estar este, unidos como familia. Es darte cuenta de que nuestros hijos son como, como unas flechas y necesitan un arquero, pero necesitan un arquero fuerte, un arquero, un, un arquero firme, un arquero que pueda compartir el conocimiento no solo con sus hijos, sino con todos los padres que nos rodean, que pertenecemos a, a la misma escuela, a la misma comunidad. Necesitamos hacer esta comunidad fuerte. Necesitamos más participación de, no solo de mamás, sino también de papás. 
Yo quiero hacer una invitación muy cordial a más padres de familia para que asistan, sean partícipes y aprovechen de esta experiencia, que se comprometan con sus hijos, que se comprometan con las escuelas. Ah, mi compromiso es invitar a más padres a que se unan a, a nosotros, a que vean que no nada más es de, de la escuela hacia afuera, que hay más cosas que, que hay, que no sabemos, que no estamos informados y que, y que también, tanto como padres, tanto como mamá como papá, tienen que estar involucrados para que nuestros hijos, en el momento que ellos lleguen a ser como nosotros, adultos, estén también ellos involucrados en sus hijos en la escuela y que sepan que no nada más es ahí los maestros, que sepan que hay más cosas afuera que nos pueden ayudar. A su niño. Uh, eh, la niñez, eh, la juventud se va rápido y todo el momento que ellos están viviendo ahorita en la escuela eh, les va a ayudar o a afectar en el futuro. Les aconsejaría a venir y, e informarse para poder tener un mejor futuro para su vida. Tanto como padres, escuela y comunidad, vamos de la mano. Para poder lograr algo necesitamos todos sentirnos apoyados uno al otro y, y pues eso, el, el seguir motivándonos por medio de la participación y, y dónde más más que en la escuela de nosotros. Me comprometo a, a seguir educando en mi casa para que mis hijos puedan ir a la escuela a aprender, porque eso es a lo que tienen que ir a la escuela. Y nosotros tenemos que seguir educando. Quiero hacer un agradecimiento muy especial al Distrito Escolar de Los Baños, que está en la mayor disposición de apoyarnos para que seamos padres involucrados, comprometidos y que nuestros hijos sean exitosos, que vayan a las mejores universidades, eh, sean profesionistas y logren sus metas y sueños. Agradecida motivada, bendecida me siento agradecida feliz, informada muy bendecida afortunada muy amada bendecida y dividida gracias so thank you thank you again for your support um, this is on behalf of the parents, on behalf of me We have had a great year and more years to come with a lot of learning and a lot of guiding our parents to guide our children. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Much. And, and I want to thank you all for being here tonight and your presentation was great. Thank you. All right, on to uh, resolution 11-23 designating certain general funds, Alejandra. Hi, good evening, board members. It is recommended. My watch is talking. It is recommended the board approve this resolution designating certain fund, general funds as committed funds. This is something we already normally do in our interim reporting. Um, this year was the first year where they passed a law where there's ed code that states we have to present it in this format now. But have you seen the designated funds in our second interim, first interim, and several interims already? Any questions? Any questions? operational change here but yes <laughs> everything seems to say all right um i need a motion to uh, adopt resolution 11-23 second. we got a motion by member muñoz seconded by member <laughs> are you guys gonna fight over it uh seconded by <laughs> <laughs> member moran um and uh it is a roll call vote tina please so miss Lee. yes miss moran yes Mr. Munoz? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Valadeo? Yes. Mr. Pereira? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. And thank you, Alejandra. All right, policy updates for first reading. Dr. Ritchie. Good evening. So we have a first reading for a new board policy and the Ministry of Regulation with regards to independent study. Um, it's some uh, minor changes that the uh, state, because there's been additions to the state law regarding independent study. And if we don't adopt this, then we'll have a finding and lose all of our funding for independent study this year. No pressure. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> all right. So we have our policy for first reading. It'll come back to us for final approval next month. Any questions? 
In a motion to uh, our, de our declared, <laughs> yes, I can talk. <laughs> it's getting late. Um, we need a motion to declare to intent the adopt uh, the uh, policies BPAR 6158 independent study. What happened? Oh, well, there's time for questions. We're good. All right, go for it. Oh, no, that's not what it was. It's Gene. He wanted me to be able to move that. Oh, well, this, you wanted to make yeah, the motion. Okay, that's why you wanted to. Okay. But Gene did it. <laughs> oh, Gene pushed your button. All right. I can hardly reach it, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, sh I, sh I should maybe clarify. He didn't push her buttons. He pushed her button. There's a button to speak. <laughs> There's a button on our mics if you want to speak. So well, if he continues, I didn't then he'll push I my buttons. <laughs> I didn't mean to push her button, but to push the mic button. All right. So we have a motion by... Gattuso. Gattuso. Yes. And seconded by... Second. Moran. <laughs> All right. So we have a motion and a second to declare intent to adopt the uh, policy 61... Uh, 58. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Not opposed? And it is carried. On to item I, which is our consent calendar. Um, and I mentioned earlier that we did have one correction on there, so that was change of our um, uh, certificated report where we had a misspelling of the school. So that was... Uh, corrected. Uh, but before we do that, um, and I don't want to pull the items because normally we're allowed to pull items and discuss them. I just want to um, give everybody's attention to two items um, on the consent calendar. So a uh, consent calendar is uh, item I, but going down to item D under donations, we had, uh, there's a number of donations on here um, from the sports boosters to uh, different teams and whatever. But uh, there's two donations on here that I, I just really want to make a note of and make everybody aware that that came to us. Um, it's a donation from Reading is Fundamental to LBE, where they're giving every student books in the whole school. The whole school, the student, the whole student body is going to get books. So we want to make sure that we are very grateful to Reading is Fundamental uh, to what they're doing for our students at LBE. And the second, and which was mentioned earlier by... Uh, Mr. Lieb, um, the donation uh, from Dollar General for uh, $30,000 to LBE for instructional supplies. And so that is also uh, needs to be noted. Um, I know, like I said, I didn't want to pull them to discuss them. I just wanted to make sure that uh, the public is aware that our schools are being very well supported by some of the uh, great organizations out there. So we want to really thank you um, for everybody who gives donations to uh, everything because there's a number of donations listed on there, but I just wanted to point out those two because um, they've done some great things for our students at LBE. So with that, um, any pulls on the consent calendar for discussion? I do need a motion and a second. I'll make a motion to approve the consent calendar. I'll second it. We've got a motion by Mr. Lieb, seconded by Ms. Catuso, to approve the consent calendar as corrected. It is a roll call vote. Tina? Mrs. Gattuso? Yes. Mr. Lieb? Yes. Ms. Moran? Yes. Mr. Munoz? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Solidale? Yes. Mr. Pura? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. Um, on to item 12, which is reporting out of closed session action. Um, we had uh, two items in closed session that we uh, needed to take action on. Um, so item number one, student discipline, expulsion case number 5517796 is expelled for one calendar year. Students are to contact educational services for readmission following the period of expulsion for a review of attendance, credits, and or grades, behavior, and recommended counseling. Students are referred to Valley Community School. The motion was by Mr. Munoz, seconded by Ms. Smith. There were seven ayes, no noes, no abstentions, and no absents. Uh, the other item was an extension leave request from a classified employee. Um, that item was approved. The motion by Lieb, seconded by Gattuso. Uh, again, uh, seven ayes, no noes, no abstentions, and no absences. Uh, next item is discussion information and future agenda items. Does any board member have anything? 
All right, seeing none. Next item is closed session, but we finished everything, so we're not going to go back into closed session. And the next item after that is reporting out of action that we took in closed session that we're not having. So with that, it is 925. Thank you all for being here, and good night, and have a great end of the school year. We'll see you in June.